massive update has dropped for Google's Bard AI. In competition with OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google has been making strides to compete against the other language model. And one way it's winning is, at least from what a lot of us will remember, the GPT-4 developer live stream, where we were promised a whole bunch of extra components that were going to be added into ChatGPT. That has been six months ago. Some of the things that they promised us was a playground where you can issue a role for ChatGPT. Point five, four has the same API to it, the same playground. The way that it works is you have a system message where you explain to the model what it's supposed to do. And we still haven't seen this to this day. Another thing that we were supposed to see is a trial and error is a testing feature where ChatGPT can test its own code, something yet to see. Again, I wanna remind you, this was over six months ago at this point where they showed us all these neat features that they'd be releasing in the future. They haven't gone at quite the speed that Google has gone, and that's why I believe Google will overtake this space if, if they continue improving BARD at the pace that they are. We gotta think about a month and a half ago, two months ago, they were talking about releasing extensions, and guess what? Extensions just dropped, that's correct. Now you can use Google BARD with extensions for free and they're enabled by default. Some things you can check out are Google Flights, Hotels, Google Maps, Google Workspace, and YouTube. This means these are all integrated together. And one of the most exciting ones for me is the Google Workspace, because now you can query your spreadsheets as well as documents that you have in the Google Cloud. Now that's fantastic. We're gonna look at an example of this, but before we do, let's take a look at Google's announcement of the extensions. It's hard to make an idea come to life when the information you need is in different places. But now you can collaborate with the world's information and your own all in one place with Bard. With extensions, Bard can now connect to Google's apps. And even so what can we do with these new connected apps? Well, they actually get into this a little bit. So now let's look at how you could potentially use these extensions from a Google example. What's being asked here is look through a specific email and tell me dates that were proposed for a Grand Canyon hiking trip. And then we look here and it says, here are the emails I have found and it gives you dates that were mentioned, which is fantastic. This is the type of stuff that extensions can do, but let's not just look at their examples. Let's do some of our own examples. But before we do, we need to really talk about the models for a moment. That way we can understand the strengths and weaknesses of each and where they stand today. First off, the ChatGPT model has stayed at 3.5 for quite a while now. If I look at what they're offering, I've done the monthly subscription before and I have a video on a breakdown of that. And if it's worth it to buy, I'll post the link in the description below. Check it out if you're interested. But anyways, they claim faster response speeds, access to GPT-4, which they still haven't given public access to. Instead, it's behind a paywall. But what the worst part is, is the exclusive access to features like plugins and advanced data analytics is behind a paywall. Google is actually blasting past that and actually giving plugins for free. Plugins is equal to extensions, but with the standard free plan, you get access to the 3.5 model, a slower response time, and model updates, they say. Well, one big thing to look at when you're using these models is how well they actually work for the thing that you're intending them to answer. For example, we can say create a Flutter app with Dart that has a table and the table has three columns and 20 rows. Let's see how well ChatGPT does this and how fast it is. If I press enter here, it took around 10 seconds to generate all of this code. Fantastic. Now let me read through some of this. First off, it tells you how to set up the project. Fantastic. We didn't even ask for that. ChatGPT definitely has good intuition. The second thing, it tells us to open up a certain file and then put in the following code. This looks pretty much correct. We're creating a new app with a stateless widget that has some information like a title, a theme, and then we say the home page is called my home page. My home page then again extends the stateless widget. So we're creating a widget, and inside the widget we are building a scaffolding with an app bar so we can say a title at the top. Then we have the body after that, which contains columns and rows. Right here you can see that we're generating 20 rows in something called a data cell that contains text in each row. And the text says the row number and which column it belongs to. Fantastic, it says to save the file and even how to run the project with the summary below. This is definitely one thing that makes 
ChatGPT stand out against all other models. And that's how verbose and correct it usually is. Now, it's only as good as the information that you give it and how specific you are at giving that information or guidance to create whatever you want to create. So before we all jump over to Google, because they seem to be releasing things quicker, let's try out the same exact prompt over here at Google's Bard. If I paste the same prompt in, I'm going to give Google a moment here. It took a little less time, around five or six seconds to generate this, so it did do it quicker, which is a plus. It also doesn't just show you information coming in as it's thinking. It doesn't go sentence by sentence, line by line. Instead, it just gives you the entire output all at once, which I appreciate. In this example, it says, create the Flutter app, same thing as before, navigate to my app, open up a specific file, add a dependency, and to make sure to get that dependency from their public repository. All right, then they open up the main Dart file. We saw that also on the other side of things at ChatGPT. They imported a specific material package or library, and they have a very similar type of layout here, which is they import this material package. They create a main and run my app. They create a class also called my app with a stateless widget. They build some scaffolding and return the app. The app contains a bar that says table example, and then they have a data table in the body with columns one, two, and three, like we said, and then it generates a list of cells with the row and column text inside of them. Very similar to what ChatGT did. Flutter run tells you how to run it, and you can see that it's not quite as verbose. It doesn't guide you exactly through things. You could actually make this more verbose by telling Bard to do that with your prompt. But anyways, it tells you what it will do at the end, a very slight summary here. And then one of the biggest differences that you'll notice is that it shows you exactly where it got its sources which is fantastic. You can actually ask ChatGPT for its sources, but it doesn't just give it to you. This is one thing I think that is important, and it's an important distinction between the two models, that the sources are directly given to you. That way, you can check the work. Overall, both did a great job. Google's Bard has improved quite a lot when it comes to programming. Now, where I think it struggles personally is when you ask it to do general things like summarizations. I don't think it's quite as good as the model that ChatGPT has. It often repeats itself, doesn't come up with the right kind of summaries. Anyways, those are things I've personally ran into. Maybe some of you haven't. Maybe some of you know how to prompt this better. But regardless, when it comes to coding, we get very similar results, at least for now. And if you made it this far, smash that like button. We're about to get into the extensions and how to use them and why they are a massive update and kick at OpenAI's ChatGPT. So what do Bard's extensions help you do? They bring it all together. They say, go from tons of tabs to one conversation. Bard can now access info from new sources, starting with maps, YouTube, flights, and hotels. You can also bring ideas to life easier and faster. So you can summarize emails, documents, PDFs. You can also turn them on and off. And let's now choose one to use. So by default, things are enabled here. YouTube is one of those extensions we can use. So how do we use the extension? Let's go check it out. I'm gonna create a new chat and then I'm going to type into the prompt here, at. At gives me a list of enabled extensions, YouTube being one of them. So with YouTube selected as an extension, now I can write something that will actually use YouTube's extension. For example, what if I wanted to find a video? Perhaps find me a video that has over 400K views and a lot of likes that shows me how to dual boot Linux with Windows. Let's see the results it has. Since this is specifically my niche, I'm interested. So it takes a moment here and you see how YouTube is connecting. All right, great. So it's returned some videos with my criteria, explaining computers, David Bombell, Alex Ziskind, and Techno Tim. Now what I'll say is it doesn't always get things right because if I launch this video, and take a look at the views, it only has 46,000 views, which is a big deal because that's part of the in inaccuracies. I asked for a video with over 400,000 views. So in my opinion, that actually does not work well. So I would hit the bad response. One thing I'll mention is Google is training and looking at these responses. They don't have the feature that ChatGPT does, which is to turn things off when it comes to feeding the algorithm. If you go to the settings, 
You can clear all chats, but what's more important is data controls. You can actually turn off the chat history and training, which is an important feature I think Google Bard needs to absolutely add in. This is one of the biggest things setting ChatGPT apart from Bard. But anyways, now you kind of understand what I mean by not quite getting there with information, although it did search YouTube. That was the point of an extension. You can now search YouTube for very specific things. It's hit or miss with Google Bard because previously when I was prompting a very similar prompt, it did come back with good results. So sometimes it comes back with good results. Sometimes it doesn't, AKA it hallucinates every once in a while. Just be mindful of that. So when it comes to this new update, which was issued only two days ago, we've gotten a better model. We've gotten extensions and we got a double check Bard's response, which is one thing that can help us with those hallucinations. What is this? Well, with the power of Google search, the G button can help you double check Bard's AI generated responses, starting with English. When a statement can be evaluated, you will see it highlighted in Bard's response and you can click to learn more. So why do they do this? They say people are using AI tools to more easily understand complex topics in new ways. As you contribute to learning journeys with Bard, it's important that you feel more confident in the information generated with AI. Now this is a step in the right direction. Check your work. It checks the sources versus what you got. So for example, give me some history about Linux. What does that return? Very good. So now I can double check this response. It's going to search Google and search related topics so it can figure out whether or not things match up on Google search. Check completed, let's understand the results. So it shows you what it actually picked from the web. Anything in green was from the web. Everything that wasn't highlighted can't necessarily be verified. And anything in brown or maybe orange here says it differs. There's something different between Google and what Bard found. It says on redhat.com, the first Red Hat Enterprise release was based on Red Hat Linux 7.2 and made on March 23rd, 2002. So this is saying there's a discrepancy with what the model returned and what Google search returned. Interesting. Very good. So we can also hit understand the results to really understand what they're doing here. Click a highlighted statement to learn more. Here's what the color of the labels mean, AKA Google search found something similar or Google search found something that's likely different. Very good. This is a powerful feature that Google has also introduced with their latest round of Google Bard updates. So does this set apart Google Bard from ChatGPT enough? Well, I think they both have their use cases. In my opinion, ChatGPT hallucinates less, giving you better information right off the bat or summarizing for you, or just giving you the information that you're looking for off of the first try. With Google, I've had to finesse it a bit. I have to keep going back and forth with chats in order to get things to work sometimes, but it does have better features in my opinion, including with these new plugins and the double check response feature now, I wanna show you another extension so we can really understand where this can become powerful. It's the Google workspace. We can do at Gmail, at Drive, and at Docs. So I'm gonna do at Drive. Let's go try that out. I'm going to create a new chat and then type in here something that's gonna reach out to one of my spreadsheets and return hopefully the highest happiness rating inside that spreadsheet. Let's try this out. I'm gonna press enter and then give Google Drive a moment to think. It says it's checking Google Workspace and it says it couldn't find any documents in the Google Drive that mentioned the country with the highest happiness rating. Well, I told it which spreadsheet to check, so it didn't check the correct spreadsheet. Let's see if that spreadsheet exists. All right, I'm inside my Google Drive. Testing does exist if we go inside of here we can see that there's data, there's a happiness index. And the index right here specifies how happy a country is and when the data was collected. Anyways, I'm gonna change this to be called happy. And now I'm gonna go back to Google Bard and ask it another question to see if it can answer it better. So I'm gonna do at, and I want the Google Drive. I'm gonna say, find my happy spreadsheet and give me the country that has the highest happiness index. Let's see if that's better and more specific. If I press enter this time, it's searching the Google workspace again, assessing my documents. And this time it says, the country with the highest happiness index in the happy spreadsheet is Finland. Now that is amazing. That is a great feature that lets you look at, analyze, summarize your own personal data, which is a big win here with these plugins or extensions. Of course, I'm not just gonna accept the fact that that's true. I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet. It's called happy and I'm going through the index. So the index is actually already sorted from top to bottom. So the highest happiness index is gonna be at the top, a 7.8 for Finland. That means the data and information that Google Bard 
returned for my own personal document is true and actually gives me the correct answer and information. How amazing is that? That's how powerful these plugins and extensions are. But one thing I do want to mention is it takes finesse. I want to get into some of the pros and cons for each model and where they excel. But one thing where Google's Bard is not excelling at is inference. I think the last prompt that I had was just about as good as this new prompt. Yes, I was a little more specific. It could have inferred some of the information that I gave it here to give me the correct answer when it said it searched all my documents and couldn't find anything about it, the happy indexer rating, which is goofy because sometimes I've asked the same question and it actually comes back with an answer, AKA it's hallucinating a little bit. So I would tell you that ChatGPT has a plus for inference. It has a minus because it doesn't give you plugins or extensions for free. It has a plus because it has a lot of popularity. It has a minus because I think it's fallen off on its innovation. If Google continues innovating at the pace that they are, Bard will overtake in my opinion. So I also wanna talk about some of Bard's pluses. Of course, plus is that we have plugins. Another great plus is that we have the double check feature now. Another plus is it's free and for the most part tends to be faster. A minus is I think it hallucinates a little more. And I do think with ChatGPT4 that the overall language model is better because it answers things more correctly. Again, you'll have to check out my other video to see what ChatGPT4 looks like and if it's worth it for you to purchase on a monthly basis. But I really wanted to make this video to cover the massive updates and how ChatGPT and Bard compare at this point in time and after using both for quite a while. I want your opinions in the comments section below. Let me know which one you have been using and why. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.